Okay, well, since everyone seems to like the background stories, um, I figured I'd do that this time. Um, as you all know, I am from Pennsylvania. Um, I was born and raised, um, and uh, I was actually born at home. Um, I guess that wasn't really that that common back in the late 70s, um, but my dad was kind of like hippie, and uh, he was all about, you know, doing the natural thing, not going to hospitals and all that stuff. Um, so I actually have two older brothers, um, Sean and Jamie, and I actually live with my brother Sean. He's the one who moved out to California first. Um, and then I have two younger sisters. Uh, my sister Lucy, we had the same dad, different mom. Um, she actually just passed away last year. Um, she had a inoperable brain tumor. It was her third one. Um, she had had the first two removed um, successfully, but then this last one um, they couldn't do anything about. And then I have uh, my youngest sister. She's 15 years younger than me. Um, she uh, she's actually an RN and goes to uh, or works in Boston. Um, and then uh, my parents divorced when I was three. So we lived with my mom until I was um, all the way through second grade. And then my dad bought a big old house up in Lewisbury and um, in a really good school district. So all of us moved up with him. And so I started third grade there. And um, I always got really good grades. So they gave me some like IQ tests or something. And so they ended up putting me in the gifted program, which just meant that I got to do like extra things sometimes during class where you know they when I remember in fifth grade we like played the stock market well not for real but lock played the stock market um and in middle school you got to play um the Oregon Trail I don't know if people remember the Oregon Trail yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know I guess it was supposed to teach you how to survive like yeah. in the wild wild <laughs> west <laughs> um so um yeah, we did really well in school. Um, I was planning on going to college. Um, I was like taking all the honors and advanced classes in ninth grade. I ended the year like 13th in the class, despite missing like 45 days of school. I just always thought school was boring, so I missed school a lot. Um, and then um, uh, when I was in 11th grade, um, we, we lost my dad to to suicide um, so I had to I basically signed out of school because I just couldn't deal with going to school and uh, and my mom wasn't really in a position to take me in so I ended up moving in with my aunt for a while so I was like we're, like practically best friends with my cousins um, but things like she didn't like that my dad used to just let me like kind of have free reign and I would come in at whatever time I felt like and my aunt wasn't having that too much so um she's like if you're gonna stay here you have to follow my rules and I was like well I don't like your rules so <laughs> I ended up moving in with some friends in like West York um I was working at Giant in the bakery and then things weren't working out there so then I moved in with some friends in uh East York and then I was like oh my gosh I can't like work at Giant for the rest of my life so I'm like I better go back to school well my um aunt and uncle on my mom's side they lived in the same school district that I was going to so I ended up moving up with them but I had to start 11th grade over because I already had you know done you know part of the year I mean I, got, I didn't finish it so um I started going but it was like the same stuff I had already done and I was so bored with it and then I was like gosh now I'm not going to graduate till like 1999 this is horrible I can't do this well I found out about this program that um York County High had or it was called York County High and um, you could go there and basically work at your own pace. And then once you got all the credits, you could graduate. Um, but the only thing was you had to have a school that was part of the, that system sponsor you. Well, of course, Redland, your, uh, the West Shore School District wasn't part of it. Um, but my boyfriend at the time lived in a school district that did sponsor that. So I'm like, well, I'll move with him. And then, so I'm like 17. <laughs> So um, I, well, I was getting ready to turn 18. Um, so I ended up talking to the principal at the school and he looked at my transcript and he's like, 
normally you have to attend the school first before they'll send you and he's like I'm not even gonna waste your time making you come here he's like we'll just sponsor you so you can go right away so I started there in January and I went through like two years worth of credits by like the end of April so then I had like a whole month off so then in that time um, my ex and I didn't want to live with his dad anymore so um, we started looking for a place and originally we started looking for rentals. Well, the only thing we could afford would be around like four fifty five hundred dollars and all the places were just horrible. And I was looking at the merchandiser one day and I saw um, a, an ad about like being able to buy a house for as much as rent and also no money down. So I called the real estate agent and he hooked us up with this program called LHOP. It's Lancaster Housing and Opportunity. If you attend like three three hour classes, they'll give you the down payment, 10% down for a house. Um, so we ended up finding a house that we liked. We went through the program and they gave us the down payment. So shortly after I graduated high school, we bought a house. It was a whopping $57,000. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But that was the one that needed a lot. Like a, it was old. It didn't, ha we didn't have to upgrade it, but it was like built in the late 1800s. So it was really old. Um, so then that's when I had learned how to work on the house and then, you know, I did that presentation on my house. Um, but anyway, um, so I ended up not going to college, just there was too much going on in my life at the time and I just, that's why I was just like, we'll just get a house and I'll start working. I tried selling Cutco for a while because they promised, oh, you can make all this money, but people in my area don't want to spend 700 and some dollars on a set of knives. Um, so then I was working at a card shop for a while and then I was at a um, sporting goods warehouse and then I ended up finding um, there was this box company that was actually in the same town that I lived in and um, I put an application in there and it was actually just to work out in the plant when I interviewed with the owner he was like you're way too smart to work out in the plant he's like I'm not gonna hire you for that but I'll call you when we have uh, like an office position um, so they had office position available um, and I um, the f didn't get the first office position, but then they ended up having another office position because um, the office manager ended up hiring her daughter and her friend. But then um, another opportunity came up, someone left. And then, so I started out basically doing like data entry, um, but then I quickly worked my way um, through the company. I was then doing scheduling, shipping and receiving, then I started doing purchasing. And then I ended up being there by time I like you know um, was there for like 14 years they made me sales service manager but then of course there was like no more room for advancement because it was a small family owned company and um, you know their kids were gonna take over the company um, so then um, I was like you know what I'm like I think I should try getting into real estate so I ended up leaving there after almost 16 years so I started there when I was 19 and then <laughs> left there when I was 35 and everyone's like oh my gosh I can't believe you're so at a company for so long but I mean it was like a good company to work for um the owners were great um but just kind of outgrew it um so then once um I got my real estate license I joined um Weikert Realtors uh it was Angle and Hambright when I started there and then they became Weikert Realtors Welcome Home and now they're just Welcome Home they dropped the Weikert Realtors but they were a great broker very they had so much support they provided all your signs and your marketing materials and everything and they just it was just a great um even though you worked individually they kind of worked as a team as well and um I was very successful with them so like in five years I ended up selling 48 houses um, of course the wow. last one was mine wow. <laughs> and the price ranges were anywhere from like 19,000 all the way up to 910,000 so the first house I sold was 28,000 in Lancaster it needed a lot of work second house I sold was 19,000 in Harrisburg but then it went up from there <laughs> but people are like you can get a house for $19,000 I'm like yeah a really not nice looking house but the guy was gonna <laughs> fix it up so um, and then of course um, you know, I decided to move here. That's why I sold my house. And then um, uh, it was during the pandemic, um, but luckily we're far enough along in the process that, you know, I was able to get through that. And then um, I was stuck in Pennsylvania for like a month because it was like a travel ban. Um, once they lifted that though, um, I drove across the country with my girl, Izzy, and um, just stopped at a bunch of places along the way. I took my time, it took three weeks to get out here actually visited a couple friends on the way out um, so that was pretty cool 
Um, and then the rest is history <laughs> so I got here. Um, but I uh, also wanted to like uh, tell you some interesting things that think like most people think are interesting about me. Um, so I drive a stick shift, most people don't, but my dad taught all of us how to drive stick shift because he thought it was important that way you could drive any car. Obviously that's going to the wayside because everything's going electric. I'm gonna be so sad when I can't drive a manual anymore. Um, but every car I've ever owned is um, has been a manual. And um, the car I have now, I've had um, since what, in 1999, so I've had, <laughs> I mean, 2009, so I've had it for like 14 years and it just hit 200,000 miles. So I'm like, just like, you know, <laughs> knocking on wood that it lasts me, <laughs> you know, as long as it possibly can. Um, and then, uh, but anyway, I work on my own car. Um, I always change my own oil. Um, I've changed my brakes and rotors. I've changed my water pump before. I have changed the radiator twice. Um, I had to cha change out a couple of O2 sensors. I had to replace my e-brake already. Um, the one window, like the motor stopped working in the back and I just watched a YouTube video on how to do it. So I fixed that myself, saved myself like 200 and some dollars. Um, and uh, I actually learned how to work on my car, my own car when I had this really crappy Integra when I was again 17 because <laughs> I had to buy my own car then um, and it was horrible and all the things kept going wrong with it but my ex knew how to work on cars so he's the one who taught me I actually learned a lot from him um, and then um, oh I also uh, painted the rims on my car I took all the tires off and you know did all the sanding prepped it properly and then repainted it <laughs> um, oh and then um, I'm not really a big sports person, but um, I do love hockey. My favorite team is the Hershey Bears. Um, my sister actually got me into hockey. Um, I started going with her because she had season tickets. And the year that I started going to watch them, they actually won their 11th Calder Cup on home ice. And the funny thing is, like, I was there to see it. And the last time they had won um, the Calder Cup on home ice, was um, the 1979-80 season. And I'm like, what a coincidence. I was born in 1979. <laughs> and then um, this year they made the Calder Cup finals and they were playing Coachella Valley and they ended up winning their 12th Calder Cup here in California. And I got to watch it on TV, which was awesome. <laughs> so I was like, look at that, I'm good luck. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so I love hockey and then um, of course now you know i'll root for the ducks because i live in anaheim um but the feeder t the parent team for the hershey bears is the capitals so i got to actually see my first capital ga capitals game like two years ago they were playing the ducks and they ended up losing though but it was awesome getting to see the the capitals play in person um oh and my other favorite sport is rugby love rugby ended up getting into it because where i worked at the packaging company the one owner had played rugby he um coached rugby a bunch of the guys would, that um worked at there played rugby like they would just graduate college work there for a little bit just as a stepping stone till they moved on um so they kept trying to get me out to games never had gone out to a game and then finally i went out to a game and i'm like wow this is pretty awesome you know like i've never really liked football but Man, rugby is just awesome. It's such a great game. Um, and a side note, um, Pierre's in France and the World Rugby Cup is going on right now in France. And I've actually gotten to see a couple games, which is awesome. Um, I always root for, the, for Ireland, obviously, because I'm Irish and they just beat South Africa, who South Africa last time won the Rugby World Cup. So that was a big for Ireland to beat um, South Africa. Um, so hopefully they can win it all but it goes on for like a whole entire like month and a half or something oh, yeah because there's all these different pools and they play and they only play on the weekends and sometimes they have to skip um but it's it's an awesome sport if anyone ever gets a chance to, to watch it um and then of course i love jack russell's um my first two dogs i actually wasn't allowed to have a dog when i was a kid so as soon as you know we got our own house i was like we gotta get a dog um so my first dog was kirby oh, she, heard that. she did yeah um and then um and then five years later we got another dog dodge so both of those were pure red jack russells um 
And then uh, once Kirby had passed, then we just had Dodge and we, I had joint custody and I was like only having him for two weeks at a time. And I hated the two weeks I didn't have a dog. Um, so I was looking for another dog. And then luckily my cousin's dog accidentally got pregnant and she was a Jack Russell Yorkie. And um, the other dog was a, a Dachshund. And so I called my cousin up and I'm like, I hear you might have a pregnant dog on your hands. And she's like, yeah, she is. And I was like, well, if one of them comes out black and white, I'm like, I want it. And she's like, you think? Cause Bella looked like a Yorkie and the other, the other one was a long haired Dachshund and he was brown. And I was like, well, Bella has Jack Russell, so maybe. And guess what? She was the first one out. She was the only tricolor one. The other ones were just black and brown. And so my cousin, right after she was born, took a picture of her and she's like, here's your puppy. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so awesome because when she was four days old, I got to go over and visit her and hold her. And she was like the size of a hot dog bun. She was so tiny. Oh my gosh. And then I ended up going and visiting once a week, every week until she could come home with me when she was eight weeks old. And I've had her ever since and she just is the best dog she doesn't have a lot of those jack russell traits she doesn't very hardly ever bark she's very social she loves other dogs she loves people she could she loves kids because my cousin had four kids and they would manhandle all the puppies so anytime she sees the kids she just gets so excited um she's just so well mannered and are she, you talking about me mommy yeah <laughs> and she loves being social so that's one thing that's so wonderful about california you can take your dog almost everywhere and it's she's really been enjoying it i mean i've been enjoying it too so um that's that's about it <laughs> how um how did you hear about btn was it through a, a was Ben, you invited. How did you? To, I yeah. met Ben at uh, the Brews and Business. Was it? Uh, I know it was one of Brian's meetings. Was it specifically in Brews and Business? Yeah, I'm pretty it? sure it was. That was the first time I met you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so at Brews and Business, yep. you went, yep. and then. And he's gone. Yeah. 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 I've been to one. Yeah. And the yeah. I gotta go back. Yeah. yeah. That's a great combo. I love that. Yeah. So Ben was telling me about it, and then, of course, you know the whole getting up at seven thing. I had to get back in the routine of getting up early. <laughs> and then once I did, it's no problem. There's no problem being yeah. here at seven. <laughs> so, so how did you reconcile getting up at seven? How did you, oh. did you go, did you pick her up to, to bring her? Oh, or no, just... no. I, it's just like <clears throat> once my niece and nephew went back to Spain last year, cause I had been staying up late hanging out with, cause everyone in my house stays up till like midnight, one o'clock. And I'm the only one that goes to bed early. So once they left, I was like, all right, I'm gonna start going to bed by like 10 o'clock. That way I can get up in time. And then that became my schedule. So yeah, so now I just go to bed earlier so I can get up early. <laughs> so, so when, but your thought process, you must have seen some kind of value, Ben's conversation oh, was. Yes, he's like, well, come check out a couple meetings. And then, you know, once you come, and of course, once I came, I saw, you know, how you guys help each other out and it's a great community. So I was like, wow, I should have came sooner. <laughs> that so. is the same <laughs> kind of process that people think through at every time, every, every time they somehow overcome the 7 a.m. thing, get here and they go, oh, wow, this is huge. This is much bigger than it could, they could have thought. Yeah, yeah. And it's been great, obviously, because I, you know, had a coffee break with Pierre and he's uh, gave me the opportunity to do work with him. And, you know, even though I knew how to do a lot of things, I'm learning even more because, you know, you, all, you always learn and things are always changing. So it's been great. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> when you, because you kind of have this, uh, you know, construction background, when you see a property that needs a little TLC before it's going to get sold, do you feel less intimidated or, you know, do you feel like you can pretty accurately look at a property that's going to need maybe some fixing up before it really is ready to go on the market? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable with that process? Yeah. Or? And of course, you know, if I have the buyer, I always, always, always recommend they get a home inspection just because I'm not an expert, you know, yeah. and there could be things that are hidden that are wrong with the property that a home inspector is gonna find. 
and I always attend the inspections and a lot of the things that I think are issues they point out so it just validates me too and um, yeah and you learn a lot by attending the um, home inspections the home inspection exposed uh, my friends in escrow the, the a fire that had been in the house, all the rafters inside the attic were burned oh, oh, and painted oh, over. It, 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 oh, and they didn't do a yeah. good job painting them. They, somebody just did it yeah. with a brush and painted over scorched and burned rafters. Wow. And, and the, the inspector says, well, this is not, <laughs> this is abnormal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they finally confessed that there was a fire in the oh, house. Oh my gosh. Undisclosed. Wow. That's crazy. I don't know why people do that. Just That's like that scary. one that Pierre was saying where they, the fire sprinkler had flooded the house and they didn't disclose that. They just waited for it to, like they dried the property out and then repainted it. And then remember you said like two weeks after escrow, all the paint started peeling. It's like, why would you hide something like that? Cause to me, it's better to over disclose, right. yeah. you know, tell them everything yeah. Yeah. because in the long run, if you don't, it's going to cost you way more because they're going to come back and sue you. Yeah. Right. In Bonita Canyon, that's what happened at the Bonita Canyon by your house. Uh, the, the, there was a, a murder, triple homicide in the house, but no, I knew that, but yeah. they didn't disclose it. Oh. The yeah. killer had put, turned on the water for two weeks, soaked and saturated through all the lights, down the walls mm. from the master, oh down, flowed that. out the garage and down the street for two weeks before Nobody neighbors said, noticed? there's been water coming out of this house for like a week. And we're painting, and but we didn't know the walls were had been previously saturated. Right. Mm -hmm. That that's that needed to be disclosed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. definitely. Kind of forgot all about that. Remember that year? Yeah. Valentine happened on Valentine's Day. Yeah, with the sun. Right? Sun, the sun, murdered the mom, dad, and the housekeeper. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Well, big. that should have been a big news story. How did it was? But that's how I discovered the, the the flood. Okay. And I did notice baseboards were warped, and I go, "You need to replace these baseboards." No, no, no. We're just gonna just paint over them and sell. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. A little more positive note. <laughs> you come across really genuine, and your whole face and demeanor lights up when you talk about your background and your. Um, and legacy, but also <laughs> your 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 struggles and your successes, and I, I hope that you find it. I assume you find it really easy to make connections with your potential clients because it, it really shows through. So great job! Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome addition to this group. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, I have one more question for you. Okay, so uh, my first car was a stick shift. Have you ever driven in San Francisco? Oh, no, that's what I was thinking, Paul. But I have driven on very steep hills and had to stop on a steep hill, and I yeah. always get so nervous. Oh I'm, God, I'm really right? good yeah. at like letting what if the there clutch was like out. A, like a heart rate and blood pressure monitor when you were doing that. I can imagine it's just like the same as the slope. Yeah, yeah I was on a full e brake on the. Yeah. That's I was the city. in uh, San Francisco, and my first truck was a Chevy S10. Not oh, a knock. Are good they are great yeah. trucks. Not a knock against Chevy. It had the emergency brake with the manual. Right was a yeah. was a foot. Yeah. Oh, it makes it harder. How do you do a hill start to oh. switch from the emergency brake to the clutch? Yeah. Get, right. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it was yeah. so fast. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
drive on a manual and I was so excited because like dealers like I love it like the feel of it uh -huh. and I went to the UK as um, Ben knows and I had specifically requested the rental car be a manual and they didn't have one I was so disappointed because <laughs> I wanted to try it on the other side oh yeah right, that would be right. yeah. 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 you have to learn yeah, how to yeah, shift with your right. left hand yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which so that's surprising because yeah, we'll over in Europe, more of the cars are stick right. shift. I think the rental cars had done it because so many people come and they're not used to it. Yeah, and so yeah. It and then they got to drive on the left. Then they got to drive on the left side. Right. It's even but worse. the transmission is the same, so it feels right. like yeah. worse. Yeah. Exactly. Right. 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 Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> it, it does feel different when you're on the other side. Yeah, you know too, Paul. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.